for me, the dream is I want to open a birth center or a hospital that focuses on holistic living and uh, natural childbirth and really keeping women safe, keeping women and their family safe. But on a personal level, I want to know that I can be in an intimate relationship. I can have a family life as well. So for me, the ultimate goal is freedom. That would really make me happy, like freedom in spirit, freedom in money, freedom in time. And I'm definitely not there yet, but I'm not too far off. I, I'm someone who thinks that nothing is impossible and definitely you start with where you are at. There's, there's always going to be a better place, a better thing to do, a better whatever, but if you wait for that better moment, that moment is never going to come. It's a place where opportunities exist, where I can make dreams come true. And I don't have that calling in other parts of the world. I have that calling here and I think that's because this is home. Mm. Yeah, and it's a place, easy place to live. It gives me a lot of freedom. It gives my son a lot of freedom. And there are a lot of opportunities. It's a good place to make money, you know, and I and, and you need that to, to make things happen. So I think it's a great opportunity, a, a, a good place for opportunities, basically. It's a workaholic place, so it's really difficult to stop working. So I don't have a day off over here. I work seven days a week, 12 to 16 hours a day, that sort of thing. Um, so that is a bit challenging. So the only way I get time off is to actually get off the country. That's the only way I, I really get to get away. Yeah. yeah, and it's because things here are cheap, like you, have, you can have a live-in helper, etc. So your life gets a bit out of balance. I do like the balance where, you know, like normal people, you have to cook, you have to do housework, you have to do these things which you can choose to forego in a place like Singapore. Because yeah. you can hire cheaper labour to get that done for you. It does in a certain way, but I have used it and turned it around into a force for good. So it forced me to think out of the box, which has been very beneficial in many ways. And one of the reasons why I'm so successful is because it's a niche market that I'm in. I, I'm, I, I capture the niche market, I'm uh, very different from the usual crowd out there and everything. And that being special or different has worked to my advantage. Yeah, sure, certain things would be nice, the benefits, the tax benefits that I would love to enjoy, like married couples do and everything, but it's okay, I can afford it. I can say that now because I can afford it. I couldn't afford it years ago, I was so poor, but I'm thankful for the experience. I, I really am because all the difficult experiences makes me who I am today. The personal calling doesn't feel heavy. My philosophy is really simple, I just do what I can. And if 20% is what I can give you today, you get 18 out of that 20 most of the time. So I don't, I don't think big, I don't, I don't feel I dream big. I just do what I can and it just happened that I can seem to do quite a fair bit of things and I have to give of making things happen. Um, the parts that causes me stress is knowing that I'm the first um, doula in Singapore, the first local doula and the first doula who actually made a full-time job out of this. And now there are people following my footsteps where they're quitting their jobs to pursue this full-time. So I do feel a bit stressed from that because I'm not just taking care of my income now, I'm taking care of the income of various people. And even though it's not like a big company, it's a big deal. Because nobody ever thought that we could make it in this industry. Nobody ever thought that they could transform this into a lifelong career. Uh, I feel responsible, of course, like as a mother for my son and everything, but I'm quite relaxed about that because that's parenting, right? There's no university for that. You learn as you go along. He will turn out fine no matter what happens, you know, and I'm not that screwed up, so <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> He'll be okay and he's very blessed. Yeah, so the, uh, for me the burden is, is really making sure that people who follow in my footsteps actually can make it too and being the one who's actually setting the example and really paving the way for all these other women 
to help other women. That is heavy. That load is heavy. But the rest of it is in my stride. It's you know a personal responsibility that I see for myself is to show people that is to actually not show people, but to live a life that is balanced and to actually live a life that that is possible. You know, you always hear people going, "Oh, they work too much. They did too much. They had too much fun. They were too lazy. They were too." You know, and part of me like wanting to run marathons, wanting to travel, wanting to whatever, because I want to prove to myself that it is possible. You can live a life of abundance, and you can have it all. I'm not there yet, <laughs> but it's it's within one's reach, and that's why it's important for me. Whether it's dancing, even if I dabble in it just a little bit, whether if it's running without running marathons without training or whatever, whether it's traveling, whether it's whatever. Is to actually for myself to show myself that I have a life, that we can live that full wholesome lives, and not to be caught up with this identity that oh I'm just this very popular and, and famous doula or whatever it is. That's not that itself does not define me. I'm defined by so many other things. I think if anything would、uh, get to me, it's being a mother. That is where my real soft spot is. Like anything to do with my son, you know, you just have to pinch that part of me, and and you get me in, in tears.、Um, anything to do with my like deep personal longings and and life, like the dreams that、I、like to materialize on a personal basis,、um, that gets to me.、Um, so I think as a mother and a lot of mothers, we have a lot of guilt. Like whether you're doing enough, and one of the things is, you know, when you lead a life where you're helping so many people, there is an opportunity cost, you know. And so I used to forego a lot of things just to make sure that the money comes in. But I also forget that I'm not no longer there. I'm actually at a place where I am comfortable, but sometimes I still operate from that old mindset. So I really have to consciously like kind of snap out of it. So that's why I'm now onto my new freedom plan. Kind of like, okay, you know, I couldn't do it this year because we're doing a lot of traveling as it is for this year. But I'm actually making time now, which I didn't before because I couldn't afford it. Where I'm saying like, look, Kieran, we're going away. I don't know where we're going yet, but we're going away. I I really feel that I live a blessed life. Like no matter how hard life gets, and even and th- this is the funny part we're talking about running marathons and those who finish in six hours, right? The harder it is, the more blessings you get. So it doesn't actually matter anymore because all I see are the blessings that comes my way, and the harder it gets, the more opportunities for blessings. Yeah, I I really feel that I live a blessed life. Like no matter how hard life gets, and even and th- this is the funny part we're talking about running marathons and those who finish in six hours, right? The harder it is, the more blessings you get. So it doesn't actually matter anymore because all I see are the blessings that comes my way, and the harder it gets, the more opportunities for blessings. Yeah.